My name is Carla Alsendor. I'm the Senior Director of the UST Max Center, and it's my great pleasure to once again welcome you all tonight. Thank you for being here. It's also my great pleasure to introduce to you tonight's speaker, Deacon Tom McNair. Tom McNair is a Catholic deacon and is currently assigned to St. Anthony of Padua Catholic Church in Woodbury, Texas. Tom was ordained a Catholic deacon in June of 1978. Been at this for quite a while. I think he knows what he's doing at this point. <laughs> Tom and Elaine were married, and they have two sons, two daughters-in-law, and six grandchildren. Tom attended Texas A&M University and Lamar University, where he received a bachelor of science degree. He is an executive in was an executive in the banking industry for more than years, and is currently president. McNair Solutions Group, LLC. Tom and Elaine have been active in the Catholic Charismatic Renewal since 1975 and began presenting a marriage seminar, One in the Lord, in the late 1980s to help couples improve their marriages. He is also co-author of this book, One in the Lord, You Too Can Have a Great Marriage. Show you know more about this this evening, but we're very, very honored and pleased to have here with us tonight to present this talk on sharing the fruit of the Holy Spirit, Deacon Tom McNair. Father, we're gathered here this evening to receive your love and your grace, to learn more about you, Son Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Learn to try to learn how to allow the Spirit to guide us in our lives, in our daily life, that we can become the people you are calling us to be. So we ask for the presence of your Holy Spirit here with us, guide us and lead us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I have another little prayer I'm going to share with you. It's called a prayer for perseverance. Let them copy it and send it out as an email to everybody who signed up tonight. Because I think you may want this prayer. Dear Lord, so far, I've done all right today. Haven't gossiped. Haven't lost my temper. Haven't been greedy, grumpy, nasty, selfish, or overindulgent. I'm really glad about that, Lord. But in a few minutes, God, I am going to get out of bed. <laughs> From then on, I'm probably going to need a lot more help. Thank you, in Jesus' name. <laughs> that a good prayer. Sometimes we just need help knowing we need Today, we celebrate the solemnity of the Nativity of Saint John, one of the greatest man, man that ever walked the space. And what was his job? His job was to tell us we need help. Right? That's all he did. That's all he did. In every one of the four gospels, Jesus is coming to be baptized by John. John said, I am baptizing you with water for repentance. But the one who comes after me is mightier than I, 
I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Find that in Matthew 3, Mark 1, Luke 3, and John. He said, Jesus is going to baptize you. If you read the Bible, so all the Old Testament is before Jesus. The New Testament was written, all of it, after Jesus resurrected. After Pentecost, after the disciples had been built. If you study scripture, very few people in the Old Testament had the Holy Spirit. Certainly the prophets, he had, so there's several of them. Moses, God's giving his spirit to certain people. New covenant is God sent His Son Jesus to be our Savior, to forgive our sins, to reunite us to the Father, and the two of them give us the Holy Spirit. So, from our baptism, I was baptized a long time. <laughs> I was born in 1940. I was baptized in 1940. So I had the Holy Spirit. So I had to hold it. He tried for it. But God never takes away our free will. So we have to decide every day. I've given over a hundred life in the spirit zone. We have one on August the 7th, St. Anthony Pines. Right where we, the whole seminar is about the Holy Spirit. Helping people truly ask the Holy Spirit, guide them, believe them. He used to have a guitar player. He used to play for me all the time. And so part of the seminar, we would pray with all the people for the Holy Spirit, for the release of the Holy Spirit, for them to, with their own free will, to choose to follow the Holy Spirit. He was always the first one in life. Have you been to 50 of these? Why are you the first one in line? He said, Tommy, I'll leave. <laughs> we all leave. We're trying to love our family. Trying to do the things. We need to be refreshed. We need to be refreshed daily. I started reading scriptures after I had been married about. So, my wife, I told y'all, we have been. Very happily married, 49. And on May the 30th, we celebrated our 57th wedding. <laughs> There's a small gap there. You asked me the other day, I heard you say that. But I think it's bad. I ain't changing the number. Because those years that weren't so great were years when I was being selfish. I can actually remember saying this, and it grieves me to say it. And I said, God, I know you're busy. 
You've helped me a lot. I'm doing great. Go help somebody. That's about the dumbest thing <laughs> anybody could ever say. And I said, okay. One of the gifts of the Spirit is wisdom. Right? If we're letting the, the, the Spirit guide us. And so after several years and a couple of kids and my wife putting up with my selfishness, she said, I want a divorce. Is it for me? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any idea how lucky you are? <laughs> I mean, there'd be ladies lined up down the street if you set me free. She says, well, they can have me. <laughs> Well, that didn't work. <laughs> I said, well, let's not rush into this. I can change. Not even knowing what I needed to change. <laughs> so I started asking her, you know, what, do, what do I need to change? She said, I don't think you love me. I said, oh, yeah, you're one of the lucky people. <laughs> I knew who I loved and who I didn't love. See, I, I heard scripture in church, right? If you go to church every Sunday, the church to me was kind of like an insurance policy. I'm still here, God. I come every Sunday, God. Unfortunately, if I would have died during the week, I might have missed heaven. You understand what I'm saying? I didn't have a seven-day Christian. I wasn't allowing, I wasn't taking the Holy Spirit out of church with me everywhere I went. And judging how some of the people leave our parking lot of church, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. In fact, I don't know how it is here, but in my parish, about half the cars park backwards. Yeah. So they can escape, right? You've got to beat the Baptist to the yeah. cafeteria. It's a red truck. I went to a friend at work. He was always talking about God. He carried a little Bible, a New Testament in his coat. His name was Ken. I said, Ken, my wife wants to divorce me. She doesn't think I love her. I don't know what to do. I'm trying to get close to God. And ever since I really started get, trying to get close to God, I don't know if he likes me either. <laughs> I think he's a little upset with me. And I don't know why. He said, you hate anybody? I said, yeah, several. <laughs> Is that a problem? <laughs> so he opened up his little Bible, 1 John chapter 4. You all know that's way in the back of the Bible. I hadn't got there yet, right? I was reading the gospel. I was reading the letters of Paul. I hadn't made it to 1 John yet. 1 John chapter 4 says, if you say your love it sticks on God and hates your brother, you are a liar. God called me a liar. I had just told a man I hated several people. Most of them owed me money. <laughs> right? What did Paul tell Timothy? The love of money is the root of all evil. Right? First Timothy chapter 6. I says, Ken, I don't want to hate anybody. God, I don't want to hate anybody. I want your forgiveness. I forgive everybody who owes me money. <laughs> I'll interrupt for one commercial. If you're going to lend money to family, just call it a gift. That's <laughs> right. Because let me tell you, if they don't pay you back, they're still happy. <laughs> You're the only one mad, right? So either say no, or just consider it a gift. And if they pay you back, lend it to somebody else, right? That's how we need to lend to family and friends. It needs to be a gift. I said, Lord, I'm going to change. I'm going to change. I'm going to try to love my brothers and sisters. I'm, I'm beginning to understand 
what my wife was telling me when she said I didn't love her. I was judging everybody. God did not send me to judge the world. Right? If, you, if you read the Gospel of John, <laughs> chapter 3, 16, 17, and 18, God sent his son to save the world. Verse 17 says, Jesus did not come to condemn the world. He came to save the world. When I read scripture, see, so I pray to the Holy Spirit, right? So I started reading scripture every day. I pray to the Holy Spirit. Help me to understand what Jesus was trying to tell me. So when I read that Jesus did not come to condemn the world, I volunteered. <laughs> I said, Jesus, would you like me to judge the world? Would you like me to condemn the world? I think I could be good at it. He said, no. And yes, you could probably be good at it, but no, I don't need you to do that. I need you to be my disciple. I need you to help me save the world. So I pray, Lord, I'm willing to change. And then inspired by the Holy Spirit, I said, Lord, there's no proof of that. But I'm willing to be willing. God, if you help me, Lord, I'm willing to be willing to change. John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. It says, if you live according to my teachings, you will be my disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Wow. He told us all the secrets. He told us how to be a disciple. He told us how to be a child of God. All we have to do is read the scriptures and be willing to change. And Paul in Galatians, right? He tells us, this is the fruit of the Spirit. So Galatians chapter 5, if you read it, Paul is comparing living in the flesh to living in the Spirit. In my first several years of marriage, most of the time I lived in the flesh. It was about greed and selfishness and having my way. And I used to come home from work and I didn't know it. My wife told me later on. All the kids would hide till they could find out what kind of mood I was in. <laughs> she wanted to hide but couldn't. <laughs> One of the things I learned through this process is we need feedback. I told my wife, don't leave me. Help me. Tell me what I need to do. I want to change. I want to be more Christ-like. John the Baptist says, Christ must increase, he must decrease. That's what the Holy Spirit wants to do to us. That people would see Christ. I said, I want to bring you love, peace, and joy. That's the first three fruits of the Spirit. And so I had to pray on the way home. I had to pray on the way home. So that when I walked in the house, I wasn't the old grumpy guy that left work. By the way, I had to start changing work. <laughs> this is all the time thing. You know, you can't do it for that. If you want to allow the Holy Spirit to change you, it has to be a church, it has to be in the parking lot, it has to be on the highway. I love driving on the highway. I just pray for everybody. Because <laughs> I'm in their way. <laughs> I can't, my car didn't go fast enough for me to keep up with them. You have to pray for everyone, help them, save them. You might want to pull that one over. <laughs> but I don't get road rage, right? I pray for them. I listen to Christian music. Right? I try to fill my life with good things. So I ask my wife to help me. And you know, when you ask somebody to help you, 
You have to actually listen to what they say. <laughs> you can't defend yourself. Right? I did that the first few years. I always had a good excuse for everything I did. It was only good to me, but I was. <laughs> but I started, you know, my wife started representing to me the Holy Spirit speaking. That is what she sees. It's not what I want her to see. It's not what I think I see. It's what she sees. So I quit overreacting. I started listening. In fact, <clears throat> one year, I said, honey, every time you think I'm getting upset or I'll raise my voice, just stick out your hand. I'm going to put a quarter in it. I'm going to smoke. <laughs> I had to carry a lot of quarters. <laughs> and she'd stick out her hand. I didn't think I was doing it. Just being me. The good news is I came up with a new plan. The next year, I bought her a plan with her name on it and my name on it and a score from zero to 10. See, we need feedback. We need to know how people are feeling about us. And sometimes people can't tell us how they're feeling. In fact, that's what gossip is. is when we tell other people about somebody, but we can't tell. And so when we would get ready to talk, I'd say, have you updated my school? <laughs> and there was one rule. You couldn't go below zero. <laughs> Which was a good rule. But I looked over there and if I was a four or five, I knew I better be smiling and saying yes to you and listening to what she said. Because right? I not only wanted to have this conversation, I wanted to raise my spirit. I wanted to, to show her I was listening. Started reading scripture and asking the Holy Spirit to guide me. How do I show love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self control? A few years later, I had done something. My wife says, You sure are generous. I said that was the Holy Spirit. The Tom Vicknear you married is cheap, stingy, and kind. <laughs> and it's only through the Holy Spirit, only through allowing God to talk to me and to speak to me, have I become generous. That I can give with joy. That's what God wants a cheerful gift. Whether it's our time, our talent, or whatever he's given us, he wants us to have joy when we give it. This is the work that Jesus calls us to do. John chapter 6, verse 28 and 29. The crowd asked Jesus, what can we do to accomplish the works of God? You ever had that question? You ever thought of that question? Here's the answer. Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. We really, you know, if we're going to be transformed, we need to ask ourselves, do we really believe in Jesus? Do we really believe that he's the Messiah? Do we really believe And if we do, then are we going to follow his teachings? Matthew 5, 6, and 7. If, if you go to daily mass, for the last few weeks, we've been going through the Sermon on the Mass. 
chapter 5, 6, and 7. It's called the Little Doctrine. It's the condensed teachings of Christ in those three chapters. He says things like, talking about the commandment, you shall not kill. He said, I say, don't get angry with you. He takes it to a whole new spiritual level. He adds love to it. <clears throat> the Jews were teaching, love your neighbor, hate your enemy. God said, Jesus said, love your enemies. Pray for your prosperity. He said, go the extra mile when somebody forces you into service. In Jesus' time, the Jews were under Roman rule. A Roman soldier could be walking through town and his armor and various stuff he would carry would weigh somewhere between 40 and 50 pounds. He could call you over to Jesus. And you legally, by Roman law, had to carry it one mile. Jesus said, go the extra mile. When somebody forces you into service, when you're forced into service to do something maybe you wouldn't normally do, figure, a way out, figure out a way to go the extra. Don't just do what you're required to do. Do something in addition to that. I was a very successful businessman at that time, but I was having trouble finding a boss smart enough to manage me. <laughs> Any of y'all ever had that from here? I mean, all bosses came from something. <laughs> you have to have some reason for doing that. So I said, you know, I was trying that with my wife and it seemed to be working. I was going the extra mile and she asked me to do things. She said, I'm going to try that on my boss. So the next time he gave me an assignment, I got it. And I said, how can I go the extra mile? What can I do to show him respect for his position? And so I did. Went the extra mile. Gave it back to him. I finished my project. Gave me another. About the third project, he called me in his office. He wanted to talk to me. I not know if I had any ideas. I went home and told my wife, I said, my boss is getting smart. <laughs> you know, people can see with that. You understand, when you're a manager, when you're a supervisor, you can see people who want to be on the team, and people who don't want to be on the team. You can see that. You can feel it. I had to give up that rebellion. I had to become a team player. Learn how to work with others and help others. It was all from studying scripture, trying to follow Christ. We just recently had Pentecost. We had the Easter season. And in Acts chapter 1, Jesus says, Wait for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 1 8, he says, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Peter had denied Christ three times. 50 days later, he's baptized in the Holy Spirit. He walks out and gives a sermon and 3,000 people confirm. He was a changed person. And it was because of the Holy Spirit. We can all change. We can all change. We need help. And you can decide, you know, a prayer partner, go to spiritual direction, Go to your priest or dean, but you come up with a plan on how to allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. And, and pick out a few people and give them privately 
the right to help. You know, people who see me. I have a deacon friend. His name is Deacon Ralph Rich. We were ordained together 43 years ago on June the 4th. We used to be like the bad cop, good cop. I was the bad cop. <laughs> if y'all need to me to hear something, tell Deacon Ralph. <laughs> he can help me. Ralph's not afraid to talk to him. He helps me in my Christian walk. And so we have walked together 43 years helping each other. It's great to have. My wife is a great help. My kids, my friends, anybody that you will allow to talk to you and tell you what they saw and what they heard. God wants to help us. He wants to help us so much that he gives us his Holy Spirit. So we can go to church, we can receive the body of Christ. He says we're temples of the Holy Spirit. Temples of the Holy Spirit. Christ daily or weekly, or how often we go to church. Christ wants to be part of helping us to transform. Helping us to love one. You've got to look at your schedule, right? You know, it's so easy today to just be busy. Right? You can be busy, and if you're not busy, you can play on your phone all day. <laughs> Allow some time. My wife and I start out every day with prayer and scripture, allowing God to talk to us. Right? We try not to have so busy of a schedule that we can't help somebody if they call. You know, if somebody needs How many have been on an action trip? Quite a few. Hopefully we'll get those started again. Part of Acts is community and service. Right? Being willing to help others. We tell people all the time, you, we need something, call me up. One of the ladies in our church says, I need some fans, huh? I said, we're coming. <laughs> I got a couple of friends of mine. We went over there, hung her fans. Her husband was out of town. They were on his list for a year. <laughs> <laughs> so I tell people, you know, one of the things I had to solve was that honeydew list, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't even know what the list looked like, right? I mean, I used to get fed one topic at a time. Mm -hmm. I went to my wife and said, honey, I'm Trying to change. I need to see the whole list. <laughs> so I can go to Home Depot once. <laughs> I said, so, so you write down the list and put a date on it. And here's my promise to you. I'm going to give you the name of electrician, painter, <laughs> carpenter. And if if it's not finished in 30 days, just call somebody. You know, I need to see the whole list, you know. And sometimes I add to, you know, she'll just say, honey, can you do this? I'll run and put it on the list. Because every time I take something off the list, I get a kick. <laughs> Boy, and after 30 days when that painter was there finishing that, we were holding hands, enjoying watching him work. <laughs> but we had a process, right? You know, let things run forever or run a year or whatever. Since I hung his fans, he's gotten a lot better. <laughs> we need to be aware of the little things. So I asked couples, right, to start each day with five positive and to end each day with five problems. Jesus tells us in his Sermon on the Mount, you know, don't worry about yesterday, don't worry about tomorrow. Today has enough troubles of its own. 
What if you could end, start every day right, with a positive? If you're not married, have a prayer partner. Have somebody you can call up. You know, I don't know if, you know, but all of the programs like AA, I call it some if you go to something like that and you're committed to change, they assign somebody that's available to you 24 hours a day to help you, to talk to you. We need to do that as Christian brothers and sisters. Have that person we can call 24 hours a day that will pray with us, that will help us, that will guide us. So let, we need to let people People who have decided to follow Christ. Mother Teresa says, love the people you live with. Isn't that a novel idea? How do we know if they can't honestly tell us? Right? That's why I like the little chart. She doesn't even have to say anything. She can just don't change my story. <laughs> Jesus tells us the golden rule in Matthew 7. Do unto others whatever you would have them do to you. This is the law and the prophet. Until people ask yourself, what would it be like to be married to me? <laughs> I would have wanted a divorce. <laughs> I wouldn't have lived with that man. You know what I'm saying? Without the change. Right? And, and, you know, we've had 30, 48 great years, and we know they're good. We talk about it. We pray about it. We have a Ten Commandments for a great marriage. We even wrote them in the book. I told people, this is not in the Bible. This is the list that my wife and I came up with. Make your own list. But if you want to have a great marriage, you need a plan. How are you going to bring God into your marriage? How are you going to let the Holy Spirit guide you? What are your priorities? My priorities, my excuse, right? My priorities when my wife was upset with my job was God got Sunday hours. When I told God I was going to trust God, I had my my wife went to Catholic school. I never did anything in school. I went to public school, never an altar boy. I told God I'll even get involved in church. Be careful when you say that. <laughs> Be careful. Man, so. Here I am reading scripture. I go to church, right? This guy comes up to me and says, Tom, yeah, would you be an usher? <laughs> if God tells somebody, <laughs> you got to watch those church people. You understand? I mean, when I start tugging you on, I went home. I said, I got to pray about it. I went, they want me to be an usher. You gotta get there early. <laughs> you gotta stay late. They might even make you go to a mass you don't go to. I don't know what could happen, right? This is crazy. But I said, yes. I became a question. God is not looking for people with ability, he's looking for people. People are so here. Here I am. I'm a baby. Every now and then I pass. People are thinking, Tom, you don't have to do that. That's where I start. <laughs> I need to remind myself every now and then where I'm starting. And if that guy had not asked me to be an usher, I wouldn't be a baby. Maybe the Holy Spirit would have done it another way. Step out and faith. Now, I tell people, I coach people all the time. If you get involved in church, the Father puts you in charge of anything, 
Start looking for your replacement. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever want to do a different job, his father will never replace you. Yeah. <laughs> right? He'll use that. Right? Right? Right. So, so, you know, you have to replace yourself at church. <laughs> so when I start that, I'm looking for people to help me. Right? I don't want to be in charge by myself. Well, I'm told I'm being given hints that I need to wrap up. <laughs> so the gifts of the Holy Spirit we receive from the Spirit and the bishop only talks about these as confirmation. Like sometimes they quiz and I think you know, wisdom, understanding, counsel, poetry, knowledge, piety, and fear of the Lord. So God is giving us gifts. So we we can discern the Holy Spirit's speaking. I was talking to a friend of mine one day. How do you discern whether the Holy Spirit wants you to do something? So he told me the process. I said, well, that would take about a week. <laughs> if the Holy Spirit wants something done today, he's going to have to talk to me. <laughs> you start stepping out. When you thank God, start stepping you can always show peace, joy, and love. So let's close with prayer, and then we're going to take some questions. In the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, you have given us your Holy Spirit to transform us, to help us to be your disciples. The main purpose of your church is to evangelize, to draw people to God. We're not to judge them with the love. Everyone has their own free will. Right? People that reject you, that reject me, that reject you eternally. Well, we have the message from Jesus Christ of salvation. That if we believe in Christ, that we believe that you raised him from the dead. That we believe that in baptism we receive your That we are a new creation. Our focus should be on eternity. Or we have to live one day at a time. We have to live in the presence of the world. We are not of the world. We are part of Jesus' body. We are the body of lead others to you. So Lord, I just ask you to bless all who are present, all who are watching and hearing. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So do you have a few questions online? Well, we don't have any questions yet, so we'll open it up for anybody here if anybody has questions for Deacon Tom. Yeah. <laughs> so I think sometimes the things that I just to avoid discussion, but sometimes I really am. I don't let it go, but yeah, we have more time. I try not to let it. It's kind of helped now that I understand what I'm talking about. What I told y'all when we started. Now that I know why I call it all arguments and I quit doing it, it's easier to stay. It's not <laughs> Any other questions? I have a suggestion. You have a suggestion? I think we have a, a great theme song that you should know about. Okay. Done by Mac Davis. Mac in the years of Rihanna. Oh, I can sing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Hard to be it's hard to be. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, Why me? <laughs> That's a good story, if y'all have seen it. Look it up on YouTube. It talks about how he wrote that song. How he wrote his you, you mean, that might not be Mike Davis. Who wrote Why Me? Chris Christopher. I'm sorry. I got confused. I'll have to look up Mac Davis. What's the name of it? It's hard to be humble. It's hard to be humble. 
basically referring to being uh, evaluated by women from zero to 10. It's hard to be humble when you're 10. <laughs> it's hard to be humble when you're zero. <laughs> because if, when you, you know, when you don't think you deserve it, but you're trying to figure out how to get the one. <laughs> it's hard to hear some of those messages. My wife, uh, <clears throat> I used to come in the old grumpy me when I was hungry. I'd work 10 or 12 hours that day. I, What's for supper? Right. You know, always scared I wouldn't like it or something. So, you know, the good news is after I turned my life around, it was right around when the Holy Spirit gave the intelligence to people to invent the cell phone, the old cell phones years ago. And so I started calling him. The one thing I told God, I was praying one day, I was praying the iron phone. He says, why do you ask me to do daily bread and expect it? Revelation from the Holy Spirit. I got home that day, hugged my wife, kissed my wife, went and sat down, playing with the kids. About half an hour later, she said, you want to eat? I jumped up. Praise God! <laughs> You're going to eat today! <laughs> I tell God I never complain about food. And I have. You know, God may be causing you to fast. You don't have to. <laughs> and so I explained all this to my wife that I was not going to let food except, and the, the, the good thing about the cell phone is on my way home. I say, honey, I call my wife. She suggested, yes, Has God been speaking to you? Are we fasting or eating? <laughs> Do I need to stop and pop? <laughs> what is the Holy Spirit told you today? <laughs> I noticed. I noticed after the kids were gone, the Holy Spirit tells her we need to eat out. <laughs> <laughs> Transformation, we did all kinds of things. We went to life and spirit seminars, we went to marriage and family, we were doing all these things. We could rap, who was not a deacon yet. We went to the same church where we were involved in the prison today. He came up to me and said, Tommy, I'm going to apply for the jacket. And I think you should go with it. The one thing you'll learn from telling the stories, I don't have any of this. <laughs> <laughs> the Holy Spirit has to tell somebody else to come out. <laughs> I seldom do anything on my own. Somebody asked me. And so, Holy Holy comes to my home. You know, I told her it was a long process. It was so easy. So she said, We could stand. Deacon Ralph and I, for three years while we we're going through our training, uh, we had to go from work because it was not good for us to go home. It was too far for us to go home. So <laughs> a friend of mine wound up in a nursing home. And that was America itself. And he asked us to start coming by. And so we started going by every week before we went to our classes and singing. And John, the man in the nursing home, would preach all the He became an evangelist. And so we would go and we would sing. John would preach. Just, just a beautiful thing. And I did that for two years. John went on to his reward. But it was really, we, <clears throat> one time Ralph and I were there, we were singing. 
and a 92 year old woman comes walking around the hall with 15 of her family. And they sat down at the table. And so when we finished, I went over to them. It's so good to see all of y'all here. Y'all here for a special occasion? And one of the sons said, Yeah, my mother's been in the coma for two days. He told us she would never wait. We would never get to talk to her. And you started singing, and she stand up and sang, and she said, Ralph and Tommy are here. Let's go. <laughs> She died a few days, but they got, I mean, she was a wreck. She was because she was there anyway. You see miracles when you just step out and face. When you step out and face, John called me up. John was on his bed before he went to the nursing home. He had worked with me. I hired him. We had started a program at my company where we hired seniors. Part time job, just a, he was by himself. He came applied for job. He brought me a book. This That's my resume and some letters of recommendation. So I opened it up. He has letters of recommendation to three presidents of the United States. He had been CEO of a few insurance. He wanted to work for me as a boy. Talk about make me look good. <laughs> I said, You're hired, God. Won't even go up till you start now. <laughs> Boy, when I had a tough way, I had a job. Quit filing and come here. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine having somebody like that? But then he retired in June. I think it's in the 70s. He calls me up. He said, Tommy, I know you're real involved in the church. Catholic Church here in Deacon, and I'm a Methodist. Would you come pray with me? They put me in hospice. They said, I've got a few months to live. So I went over to John's house and I'm praying. God, I just, you know, there is a sickness under there. Right? We can pray for healing. We've got a sacrament that's called anointing. We pray for healing for people all the time. I got to John's house and I said, you know, I prayed all John. I don't know his spiritual condition, but I just pray that on his deathbed, he becomes a child. So I went in there and I started talking to John and I led him through the senior uh, center. He said, Tom, I went to church to be good for business. I went to church to be good for business. He's never said, I don't know where I'm going. So I prayed to John. He asked, Jesus to be his savior. He asked the Holy Spirit to come into his life. You were sitting there praying. Thank you, Jesus. You were singing. He said, Tommy, would you pray that God would heal me? I hadn't read any books on healing. They didn't train me that. Yeah. I hadn't been trained in the diaconate. Because only priests can do the anointing yeah. of the sick. Right? I said, John, you're going to be healed. You're going to heaven. You're going to be with God. You're a child of God, man. You're going to be healed. Let's just keep praying. Second time, God, Tommy, would you pray for healing? I'm saying to myself, Holy Spirit, tell me something. <laughs> man on his deathbed, tell me something. God, just keep praying. Well, the third time, he says, Tommy, if you're not going to pray for me, would you pray with me? Uh, you've been a Christian 20 years. You've already quoted the scripture. So John said, John, I have, he said, God, I have lived for myself 75 years. Anytime you give me, I'm going to live for you. John was convicted. Wow. He moved into the nursing home. He evangelized and noticed it every day. And that's why I was so excited. So I've seen a few miracles. Yeah. <laughs> right? That was the last time I hesitated. When somebody comes to me for prayer, I pray, let's pray right now. Yeah. So, because if it's not a sickness, God always hears us. He doesn't always do what we want him to do. He does what we need. He does what he needs. I was telling these ladies earlier, I told my wife the other day, in case you haven't done the math yet, I'm 78 years old. 
I've been ordained. You got to be 35 when you're ordained. I've been ordained 40. I told my wife the other day, I said, honey, <clears throat> it's hard to get old. She's spelling that. It ain't hard to get old. It's hard to be old. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. We just thank God for every day we have. We thank God. And we're going to serve him until he wants us up there. Amen. He wants us up there. So let's just, this is, in case y'all haven't noticed, this is what the world needs. <laughs> this is what the world needs. How are we doing? We're finished. Thank you. God bless you.